Welcome to People's Baptist Church. Glad you're all here for church this morning. We're going to get started. If you'll just stand together, we'll be singing, opening with a song of praise, Revive Us Again. We'll sing that first and second verse together, and then we'll sing that chorus. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. We praise Thee. All right, I'm sorry, we're going to that second verse. We praise Thee, O God. We praise Thee, O God, for Thy Spirit of light, who has shown us our Savior and scattered. course on all of these. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love, may each soul be rekindled with fire from above, hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. Well, amen, aren't you grateful? Brother Jeff, he, he, he made mention that we were going to do that, and, and we didn't listen, did we, Brother Jeff? I tell you what, we don't follow very good, amen? But amen, I'm grateful that uh, God's so good that anyway. Be the best <laughs> amen. Uh, I want to ask you to pray for um, Miss Diane's niece, Laura Strange. It's, uh, she just went to the hospital this morning, right, sis? And uh, she's uh, having uh, some trouble with her pregnancy. So we need to really pray that they might have to take the baby early, that uh, God will just intervene and, and um, that, uh, that his will will be done. Amen. Amen. And uh, I want you to pray for my cousin. Uh, her name's Trish. I'm going to be taking her to the hospital after service uh, today. She is, uh, they've given her some medicine and it's really caused her to have suicidal thoughts. And uh, so pray that God will just uh, watch over her and, and help her during this time. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll open up our service. Father, we do thank you so much for your good grace and mercy. And Lord, I pray, God, that you'll help us in the service today. Oh, God, if you would touch and minister, I pray. Lord, have your will. God, you know the, the inadequacy that I am, Lord, to be able to stand and preach your word. But, Lord, I pray that you would, that you would bring it together the way that it needs to be. Lord, bless the singing. Lord, help us to lift up your voice. God, I pray you fill this place with our presence. Lord, we love you and thank you for all that you do. Bless and have your will, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, brother. amen. Let's sing together one more song here. Uh, only trust him. And we'll, we'll go ahead and do it with all the courses. <laughs> Let's do a verse and a course and a verse and a course. <laughs> Only trust him. I'll trust him. <laughs> Come every soul by sin oppressed. There's mercy with the Lord. And he will surely give you rest by trusting in his word. Only trust him, only trust him, only trust him now. He will save you, he will save you, he will save you now. For Jesus shed his precious blood, rich blessings to bestow. Plunge now into the crimson flood. 
that washes white as snow. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him now. He will save you, He will save you, He will save you now. Yes, Jesus is the truth, the way that leads you into rest. Trust him now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. And at last, come then and join this holy band and on to glory go to dwell in that celestial land where joys immortal flow. Trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him now. He will save you, He will save you, He will save you now. Be seated. Be seated. Well, what a blessing to be in the house of the Lord again. I'm glad to see everybody that's here. I want you to continue to pray for our, our nation as we're... Uh, uh, are in this we're in this new way of life for, for a season no doubt so let's let's just continue to pray that God will reveal himself and send revival to our land Amen. we need revival right. but I want to be honest with you if it does if the church doesn't get revived right. there's no hope for anybody else there's no hope for anybody else right. so it's not the world that needs to be revived it's us. We need to be revived. And I want you to pray. Oh, God, help us. Help us really pray. I mean, if nothing else, this should make us greater prayer warriors. Amen. This, this should make us become really dedicated in our prayers. Amen. I, I want you to know that, that in, the, in the last month or two, uh, I've I, not fasted anymore. I, I, I fasted more in the last two months than I fasted in the last year. And we need, to, we need to realize that it is time for us to really seek God, to really seek Him. And I know that, uh, listen, I know that, uh, that we're small. I know this is a small church. But I want to tell you, revival can start right here. Amen. Revival can start at this church right here, and it can be an impact on our world. It really can. Amen. God is no respect of persons. He, he, he will use us, and He will bless us, and He'll pour His Spirit out upon us, and He'll let us do greater things than we ever thought we could do. Amen. I think about the 12 apostles. I, I guarantee you those 12 apostles never would have thought all that they, even after Christ raised from the dead, I bet they still didn't realize the full potential of all that they were doing. And yet we're living in a day where this, this darkness is upon us is so great Amen. that it ought to drive us to our knees Amen. to get right, to get God all over us. So let's pray. Let's pray that the Lord will, will do that. Don't forget to pray for the, your prayer list. It's in your bulletin. And uh, it, it's been mailed out to you to those that are on the on the the list to get it, and by email. So uh, please be in prayer for those that are on this list. Uh, continue to pray for uh, for our services. We're still we're still not having any Sunday night services uh, as of yet, and uh, and I'm still praying about it. I know that 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 uh, that, that there's uh, you know there's there's those that would like us to, but for right now, we're still praying that, uh, and asking God to really give me some direction on it. 
So continue to pray for me on those things. Wednesday night services, we are having services, so please uh, feel free to, to be here. We have our prayer uh, uh, where we take prayer requests. We read our prayer letters from our missionaries. So continue to pray for those things also and uh, as, you're, as you're praying. And uh, uh, especially uh, the upcoming 4th of July, I do want to make this announcement uh, that uh, Corinth Baptist is having a uh, 3rd, of, uh, 3rd of July on Friday. Uh, they're having a get-together, and uh, Brother Tommy has invited anybody that wants to come to our church to be able to come. So if you, will, if you would like to be a part of that, uh, you have to call and get tickets uh, for the food. The, the food will be provided by um, um, Varsity. That's right. By the Varsity, and uh, I think it's $5 a ticket. To be able to eat, and then you're eating from 6:30, uh, from 6:30 to 7:30, and after that, they will not be served. So, if you're interested in doing that and being a part of that, uh, please call and reserve your tickets to be able to be to do that. There, I believe they're planning on having fireworks also there. So, uh, if nothing else, uh, if you're not planning on going, please pray for the event that's taking place there. Also, the Baptist Fellowship that'll be taking place, I believe, it's on the 12th. Uh, that will be held at Corinth Baptist also and uh, for the preachers that will be meeting there. And that's, I mean, it, it is for preachers to get together, but everybody that likes the Word of God is, is welcome to come. Amen. So I know that they would appreciate that. And so uh, please set that aside on, in your calendar to be able to be a part of that. Brother Burris is the one that is uh, head, heading up. He is the mediator of that. So please be in prayer for those things that will be taking place concerning that and I believe that is all the announcements that I have continue to pray for our our uh, people here and and those that are in need uh, and for our our uh, especially our children's ministry as we're uh, learning how to to stay in communication with these young kids and also to be able to uh, do some kind of outreach for them here and there so please continue to pray for those things brother Jeff Amen. thank you pastor well, I'd like to remember uh, one of ours, uh, one of our home folk that is having a birthday coming up Tuesday. Is Miss Eleanor watching live stream this morning, brother? Well, amen. Well, we want to sing to you, Miss Eleanor, if you're out there watching on live stream. We want to sing happy birthday to you. We know your birthday's coming up on Tuesday. And, uh, and the congregation is saying, we love you, Eleanor. <laughs> so we're going to sing to you now, and, and hopefully you'll be able to hear this. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. We love you, sis, and appreciate you, and, uh, and thank you for all the calls that you make and the blessing and the prayers that you give to so many that are here and gathered throughout the years. So we miss you. Um, there's also an anniversary on the same day, on the 30th, on Tuesday. Where's Bill at, sis? He's not, well. he's not feeling well. Is he live streaming? Do you know if he's watching on the stream? I don't know. Okay. He'll, he'll watch it later. Okay, well, well, give us a G, and we'll sing to you. <laughs> Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. Amen. We thank y'all for, for your work and your service and all that you've done uh, to the, for the church and, and continue to do. Brother Bill, I know helping out with these lights. How y'all like the lights? Amen. Y'all getting enough lights for the Bibles now and to be able to see what you're, see what you're reading and, and where you're sitting? What a blessing. I know Brother Bill was a part of that, um, part of that team that came together. Brother, yeah, Brother, uh, Brother Peppers and I know Daniel and the pastor and Brother Bill, they were, all, uh, they were all very dedicated for many weeks there to get those up and put together. And what a job, what a good job they did. Amen. So we're going to sing a song together, Take My Life and Let It Be. As we, uh, as we meditate going into our message here. Take my life and let it be. <clears throat> Take my life 
then let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love, at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee take my voice and let me sing always only for my king always only for my king take my lips and let them be filled with messages for thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold, not a might would I withhold. And that last, take my love, my God, I pour at thy feet treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee, ever only all for thee. Amen. 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 Well, I, I've uh, been preparing the message for this week uh, started actually started Monday and Wednesday I, I announced that I was going to be preaching from it and I'm, I'm still preaching from it I, I just wanted to tell you that it's been the hardest message to prepare that I've ever prepared I believe in a long time and uh, last night we had a storm come up and all, I, I, I do all my studying online and uh, the power went out amen I'd already been studying all day long, so it wasn't much, uh, uh, the power going out, uh, because I wait to the very end of my studies to actually put it together. I don't uh, just just uh, put it together and then study what I put together. I study up until the last day, and then I, then I bring it all together and try to get it all where it makes sense. Amen? And uh, as I was doing that, uh, the power went out. As a matter of fact, I... Uh, I, I got you covered. I, I got the mic. It's on. Amen. They want to be able to hear me back here. Amen. I hope, I hope you can hear me better now. But as I was studying and the, the power went off, uh, uh, I, was, uh, I, was, I was at the place where I was meditating on, on what to put down. And as I was writing it down, the power went off, so I wasn't able to, to finish it. So I had to get it real early this morning and really rush through it. And I usually use this morning to, come, to get my what I put down on the paper and I and to go through it to make sure that it really makes sense I don't know if y'all are you know sometimes what you put down on paper really don't make sense when you start to talk about it amen so so I try to get it all together and it's, there, there's really more that goes into a sermon than most people ever want to admit especially me as a preacher I I, I, I used to I used to be that type of preacher that that just give me a topic and uh, I'll just run with it. Amen. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Charles Spurgeon used to have, uh, have uh, students, and he'd, he would uh, bring them into the auditorium. And then uh, before they'd get up, they'd get two minutes, and uh, he'd give them a topic. Two minutes before they preach, and they, they, they would have to get up and preach on that topic for two minutes. And uh, I, I used to be like that. I said, well, the, the, I'm just going to let the Spirit of God guide me. Well, I learned that the Spirit of God sometimes don't want to guide me like that. Amen? Uh, sometimes I, wait, I, I stand up and I ain't got nothing to say. But I want you to know I got a lot to say today. And I want you to just be patient with me because I don't really know how it's going to turn out because I haven't had a chance to really go over all that I had to put on paper this morning really early. Uh, I, I have it in my mind what I want to say, but I just want it to be able to come about. So if you have your Bibles, I want to invite you to turn to Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8 is a very tremendous chapter. 
It, gives us, it actually gives us the working of the Holy Spirit throughout our salvation in conception. And it is, it is, it is, it is, the, it is the, the best chapter on eternal security that there is, in, I believe, in all the Bible. Because everything in it points towards what God's done for you and how, God, how it can never be taken away from you. And boy, we are, we are to be able to dig into that and to really get some, um, and to be able to see our security. But I, I, I don't want to, I, I want to I wanna sort of bring that out as we look uh, through some things that are in that chapter. But I, I want to focus on just three small verses. Verse number 28, 29, and 30. And uh, I want you to realize that in, in our lives, uh, there's, there is, um, there's a multitude of things, especially today, that's going on in our lives. And uh, something that, uh, that our family is, is, is uh, we're, we're, we're facing things that, that we were hoping we'd never have to face again concerning Amanda's transplant and everything. And, and uh, suffering has become a great part of a day-to-day living in our life. And, uh, and, 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 that, and that's being compounded by the cor- coronavirus, the political uh, stuff that's going on, the, the uh, riots, and everything that's going on in the world today. And there is so much suffering in the lives of people today that I wanted us to look into this verse because these verses right here give us a great assurance. They give us some great uh, things that we can really stand on. But also it reveals some things about suffering that we need to focus on. That we need to take an understanding in our lives. That we need to um, check ourselves with. Because I want you to understand this right here. (laughs) Before I get started. That I know... That everything that happens to us is not good. I want you to realize that before I get started, because some of the time, some of the things I'm going to tell you, you're going to say, but but that's not good. That's not good. Well, the question isn't, is it good? The question is the outcome of our lives. And that's what the focus is. The focus is on the eternal salvation, even through these verses. But I don't want us to just to look at that. I really want us to look at, at the actual entering into the suffering part of our dealing with this in our lives. Now, with that being said, I'm going to read these verses and then... And then I'm going to find out where I am in my notes because, uh, like I said, we're, we're, uh, we're working through this. And this is, this is all trial and error. Amen? But I, wanna, I, I want you to leave here with an understanding. I don't want you to sit up here and preach a message and to get loud and to yell hallelujah and to say glory be to God and stuff like that. I want us to learn. And uh, this morning the Lord really smote my heart and said, you know, church is not... And hasn't been what it should be for a long period of time. For years, and I, I would even say decades, we, we have looked at church as an evangelistic tool. It's not. It is a place for us to worship and a place for us to learn. Sometimes I think that the Jehovah's Witness has a better understanding about what the congregation is to do when they come together. Because they prepare to go out and witness. Now this is free. I'm not, this is not part of the sermon, but I'm going to put this out there because this, this is very needed. We are called to be disciples. I, I want you to realize this. Okay, I want you to get the grasp of this. You're not a disciple unless you're discipling. 
Now let's back up and look at our lives. If we don't have anybody we're discipling, then where are we? Every person, every person that is called to be a child of God should be searching for someone to tell and teach what they know about the Lord. Everybody. It, 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 and it might be a long process. And it might be a short process. But you should be looking for someone. Well, in Romans chapter 8, verse number 28, it says this right here. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love, the, love God and to them who are called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also de- did predestinate to become conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestine, them He also called. And to whom He, and whom he called, to Him... Uh, to he, he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. And Lord, you know I stand before you and I need your help. Lord, I, I don't desire to have a, uh, uh, a message that people are going to say, Oh, good gracious, that's just great. No, oh, God, I know that people are suffering. Lord, I know in my own family they're suffering. And Lord, I know that there's, there's, it, there is that place of unlikeness, of, uh, of being in suffering. Lord, I pray that you would let us be able to see in thy word. And Lord, through your word, the need to suffer. Lord, help us to humble ourselves and to see ourselves through it all. I do love you and thank you for all that you do. Your good grace and mercy, Lord. I pray that you'd have your will through this service. Give me liberty to preach. Give me remembrance. Lord, I pray that you would give me clarity of thought and make it plain before the people. Lord, I ask these things in thy precious name. And if thy will be done, I'll praise you. For thou art good and gracious. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As we look uh, through this chapter, this great chapter that is before us, we see that in uh, the, the acting or the evidence or the working of the Holy Spirit throughout all this chapter. It is actually that by what the Holy Spirit does in us, through us, and has sealed us. Uh, you could look through the whole book and you would see that, uh, uh, or this whole chapter, and you'd see that uh, in verses 1 through 3, uh, He gives us the freedom over sin and death. In verses 4, He, he reveals uh, 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 the fulfilling of the law and the righteousness that is given to us by Christ. In verse number 5 through 11, he gives us the nature, uh, 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 the cha- he changes our nature or, or what we were like into what Christ is like. In verses number 12 through 13, we see the empowerment to, to have victory over our sins in our daily living. In verses number 17 through verse number 27, we see that he is the guarantor of eternal uh, salvation and glory for us. He is that, that earnest of our, of our inheritance. But uh, these statements right here bring us to a place in, in uh, verse number 23 where God makes a, a statement that, that should be by what we as Christians uh, hold tightly to. I mean, this statement is given in verse number 28, and, it's, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. This statement right here 
It, it, is a un, it is a limitless statement because it uses all things. There's nothing that, that, that in a believer's life that takes place. And can I tell you that I know that there's horrible things that take place in people's lives. There, there are some things that are horrific that we would never, ever even want to, we, we don't even want to talk about them in public. In believers' lives that take place. And yet God put this verse in here to say that all things are working good. How is that even possible? How is it possible for that to take place? But if it be so, and if the Word of God be true, then we must know that there has to be a way that this is taking place. So these verses, and this, I mean, this verse and, and the, the contents of it should give more hope, more happiness, more freedom, more joy in our heart to be able to read these things, to, to, to know this as we go through our life. We should be able to say that no matter what our pain, no matter what our problem, no matter what our failure, no matter what our difficult that we're going through, no matter the distress that's in our life, no matter the sins that, that may cause us to stumble and fall, no matter our suffering, no matter our temptation, all things are working together for good. It's a difficult thing to, to be able to see. But I believe God is using this verse right here to, to sort of illustrate the security of us as believers. I believe He uses that, that verse right there as a, as a, a verse that secures Everything in the life of a believer. As he does in verse number 32. For in verse number 32 he says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with, all, with, with him also freely give us all things? It is, it is a surety that if God would not hold back His own Son from us being ungodly sinners, the most precious thing that He has, then why would He withhold anything else from us? God gives us this beautiful picture. That if Christ was given for us, would He not freely give us all things? No matter how extensive it is. No, more, no, no matter how overwhelming the nature of it may be. God is using in the activities of our life to weave in our lives that what is good. But I want you to make sure and listen very closely to me. I do know that, thing, that not all things are necessarily good. It is such a, a place in my mind that I want you to realize that I'm not saying that the place that you're in is a good place. Because it's not good to suffer. It's hard and it causes us to many times wonder if God really cares. But I want you to look at that word good there just for a second. Because this word good there, it really holds forth more than what we could ever think. Because it is talking not just about that what is good, but that is what is pure and truly, sincerely good, morally good, practically good. It, com it, it, it brings about all that goodness really is. Not just a one-time sense or feeling. 
but he promises that he is working it for good. This is the question. If he promises that that he's working it for good, then how can our lives as believers have so much bad happen to it? Well, the answer is, in the nutshell, this right here. That the things that happen to us through this life ultimately end up in good. How does that take place? Well, it's the same as it tells us in verse number 35 that nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Verse number 31 where he says, If God is for us, who can be against us? Verse number 34, who is going to condemn us? See, he, he's telling us in these verses right here that there is nothing that can separate us. There's a security in our belief that ultimately there'll be a day where there'll be no more hurt. There'll be no more suffering. The end result of our life will come to that what is good. A likeness of Christ. That is the ultimate truth of this verse. It's not that the things that I'm suffering through at this moment necessarily are good. Or to be desirable, even. But there are some things that, this, that, that the suffering of today brings in our life. And there are some good things by what God is working also. Because... The working out of things in our life are based on two th basic principles. Good things and bad things. There's no mediocre things that happen in our life, really. They're either good or they're bad. And God is working some good things in our life. And I want to sit there just for a moment and I want to reveal those to you because so many times we overlook them. We overlook the good things that God is doing because we're so surrounded by things that we're focused on that are bad. And we forget that God is good. We can look at His very nature and see that He's good. We can look at His great power that He has to work good in our life. His power by which he, he reveals in Deuteronomy chapter number 33 and verse number 27. He says, he says, the eternal God is thy refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. Can I tell you that, that I like that poem that, that we read many times of the footprints of the stand. Where you see two sets of footprints. But during difficult times there's only one. And you wonder where did God go? And at the end God says. He was carrying us. Those everlasting arms. Can you think about Daniel going into the, the, the captivity of Babylon. And, and, uh, and he purposed in his heart. That he would serve God. Jonah, even as that one that, that was carried away and, and ran from God, it there at the end was not God even teaching him the lessons of life through the struggles that he went through. That these people were people by which he should have compassion. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego in the, in the fiery furnace. In the midst of their tribulation and suffering was not God sufficient. His great power by what he <laughs> reveals throughout his scripture of uh, who he is and his willingness to sustain us. You say, well, Brother David, those are all Old Testament stories that you're giving us. Yes, that's true, but can you... 
Remember back with me in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse number 9. Paul had been blinded uh, in Acts. And there God had revealed to him and, and lifted the scales from his eyes. But yet there was a thorn in the flesh that he had. A thorn by what he felt like would be that that, that was hindering him from being able to do God's purpose. Can I tell you, many times I thought that the job that I had was hindering me. Many times I thought that, that uh, you know, that, that my, uh, my Ill, 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 illiteracy was, was hindering me. Many times I thought that, that, uh, that my, you know, that, that, uh, that my, uh, un, uh, me not having enough money was hindering me. But can I tell you, that as Paul found out, God said to him that his grace was sufficient. God's great grace is sufficient for, to strengthen us. He said, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, I, I tell you that I learned that, that it's not those things that I see that I might see that hinder God that are outside of me. But more than that, it's usually the things that I am that hinder me from serving God. God's power is proven over and over. He has the power by which He uses to conquer and has given us victory over the, our enemy, Satan. He has given us the power to overcome the flesh and sin. It is God's goodness and His great power that's working for our good. And not only His power, can I tell you His wisdom by which He wrote in His Word. The wisdom by which He is stable, uh, laid out for us to be able to follow. Did He not tell us in His Word, Thy, thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto our path. For us to be able to be guided by the wisdom that's in the Word. The wisdom of the Scriptures that's given to show forth. That leads us to that great understanding and joy in our life. How about His promises? The promises that He's spelled out throughout the Scriptures. For each and every one of us to be able to cling in. I mean, he has told us if we'll humble ourselves, he'll give us grace. In James chapter 4 and verse number 6. But he giveth more grace when he saith, God resisteth the proud and giveth grace unto the humble. When we obey his word. Hosea chapter number 14, verse number 4 says, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. I mean, He is there for us. When we are wayward from Him, He is willing and waiting with a promise that He'll forgive us. Micah 7 tells us, He says, Who is a God like unto thee? I mean, who is likened unto the God that we serve? Who is likened to this God that, that says that He is working all things for our benefit? When trouble comes, in Psalms 91, 15, He says, He shall come upon me, and I will answer Him. And I will be with Him in trouble. I will deliver Him and honor Him. Did he not tell us that he would never leave us nor forsake us? In Psalms 37, 39 says, But the salvation of the righteous is of God, or of the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. How about when 
It seems like that there's nowhere for us to turn, no, re- no resource that we can call upon, no money that we, can, that we can get a hold of to be able to meet the need, no, no, no money that could even purchase what we need. No understanding of what's going on in our life. No, no ability to be able to find the answer. And yet in Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 19, he says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Psalms 37, 25 says, I have been young and, no, and now am I old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He has guaranteed us that he would meet our need. That he would provide all things for us. How about just a simple fact that all the scriptures are given for our good. All the scriptures that are are in the word of God have been given to teach us how we're to pray, how we're to to lead our life, how we're to be drawn closer to him, how we're to praise him, how we're to learn how to be like him, to witness. Everything that we could ever imagine is mentioned throughout the scriptures by what we are to have in our lives. Can I say that not only the characteristics of God... But can I tell you the ability that he's given us to enter into the throne of grace? How prayer works for our good. It is the key that unlocks the treasure chest of God. Mercy upon our lives. Prayer is that that keeps us, keeps our heart open and shut to sin. Prayer is that that causes us to, to release and to, ha- to be able to have relief over a grieving heart. Prayer brings comfort. All these things the Bible gives us, teaches us. How we are to obey, how we are to submit ourselves, how we are to allow the fruits of the Spirit to be a part of our life. How we are to have, let Him have control of our life. We serve a good God. And His good character. And His good nature. He is working many good things in our lives. And for our good. For our learning. For our ministering. For our obedience. But in spite of all these good things. And all these promises. Yet in our lives. And in the path of those who believe. Many times are things that are bad. Our lives are filled up with it. Why? Like the Bible says in Job. Man is born in trouble as the sparks fly upward. It it is something that we can't explain nor do we truly understand all of it. For we're not God. Nor can we give a, a true explanation about what is satisfying unto most. Except that we have to trust God. The real issue is here. The good thing that it talks about is not the bad that we experience. But can that bad thing separate us from God? That is the truth in these verses. That we live because of of who we are in Christ. In a non-condemned state before God. And there is nothing that we can do, nothing that we can that we can actually experience that could ever take that away. There will nothing ever remove the salvation by which we've received. With that in mind, as an introduction, I just want you to know that was just the introduction. We're just getting started here. I want us to look, if you would, just a minute at the characteristics of those bad things. There's three that I've seen, but I only want, I'm only going to be able to cover one, and we, I doubt if I'll ever preach this topic again with the other two. But I want us to look at suffering. Because suffering has become something that has been really evident 
in the life of many believers here lately. And as we look into it, I want us to see how suffering helps us in many ways. Not that it's good, and definitely not that it's enjoyable. But I want us to back up and I want us to see that suffering is bad because of, not because God desires for you to go through bad things, but simply because of the fall and curse of man. Back in the garden when Adam and Eve was there, there was nothing that was bad. There was nothing that was out of place. There was nothing that was wrong. It was all good. We didn't have to worry about coronaviruses. Amen. And didn't have to worry about sickness. Didn't have to worry about achy joints and bones. And didn't have to worry about laying in one place too long because it makes you hurt. And do you know what I'm talking about? Can I get an amen right there? I know I tossed about three times last night, turned last night, because I, I woke up hurting so bad. We, there was none of that until after the fall of man. And because of the fall of man, we had to realize that sin came into the world. And sin brought with it bad things. This must be a understanding in our life that life is going to be full of those things. It's very, it would be very naive of us to think that we're going to live through life and not experience bad things. But the question has been brought to me, why me? Why does it seem like it's always me and not somebody else? Well, can I tell you this right here, that other people are experiencing bad things too? Just because you don't know it, or just because you can't see it, does not mean that they're not going through something horrendous. But I do want you to realize that in the working of these bad things in God, or through the child of God, it turns out for good for us. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 10 says this right here. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto His eternal glory by Jesus Christ, hath after ye had suffered a while, make you perfect, established, and strengthened. In James chapter number 1, verse number 2, it says, My brethren, count it all joy. When you fall into diverse temptation, knowing that, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Suffering has its purpose. It proves in us Things by which we need to be that need to be revealed. Suffering does produce good. Why? Because we learn how to deal with pain. And when we learn how to deal with pain, it causes us to be able to help others. It gives us and teaches us compassion. It helps us to learn patience. It really makes us more gentle. And it teaches us how to trust. We learn how to experience the grace of God and His mercy. How can goodness come out of that of suffering? You know, sometimes I have a hard time being able to answer that. But then I think about Joseph and all that he suffered through. And then I think about what he said there at the end. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Right. Oh, how we need to realize that the picture is bigger than just what we are going through. Right. How about Job? No greater man in all the word of God 
No man had suffered more than him either. He lost his wealth, he lost his family, and he lost his health. All the things that men treasure, everything was taken from him. And yet, there at the end, he said, I've heard of thee with my ear, but now my eyes have seen thee. Oh, how suffering brought him closer to God. It, it, if you looked at his life, you would think there could be no way that he could get closer to God than what he was. And yet, there at the end, he was closer than he ever thought. He learned how to rely on God. We already talked about the lesson of Paul in chapter number 12 of 2 Corinthians with the thorn in the flesh. How he realized and found that the, that the weakness that he was going through was a place by which God could reveal his strength. How God could reveal himself in a greater way through that weakness than he ever could with Paul being strong within himself. Can I tell you the suffering that we're going through is an opportunity for God to reveal himself that others would have to sit back in awe and say, how can this ever be? How could this man ever be the preacher that he is in the condition that he is in? How can this suffering person be such a peaceful, humble, loving, trusting child of God going through all these things? I know suffering is something that's hard to do. It makes us impatient. It, it can make us bitter. It, it definitely makes us ask the question, where are you, God? It brings us to a place where, where we, we feel angry. We end up a lot of times wallowing in our self-pity. We become very... Self-centered. Prideful. And we desire everybody to share in our pain. That's what pain really does. Suffering is hard. And it teaches us how to hate sin. I want to give you just a few things that I believe that we can learn through suffering. It helps us to experience a greater fellowship with our Savior. I don't know about you, but whenever suffering comes into my life, it always drives me to fall on my knees. It enhances my prayer life. It makes me more desirable for God's presence. But it is not just our prayer life that's enhanced. Patient, um, uh, suffering helps us to be able to enter into... And to identify with the sufferings of Christ. That we can see a little bit or get a little glimpse, a glimpse of how Christ suffered for us. As our great high priest and savior. It gives us the ability to overcome things that it reveals in our life. It puts not our focus on our dreams and our wants, but that on God and His will. It takes away our pride, 
Because it brings us to a humble estate, realizing that we cannot change, our, change the situation within ourselves. It burns off the draught of our life or the sins that may be therein. The Lord uses suffering to chase and drive out sin from us. Everything that God does works together for good in our lives. Reveals our, our un, this unwillingness to, to normally to fall before Him. Gives us a greater desire to do so. Takes away our spiritual pride. Reveals our weakness and causes us to lean closer on Him. I know that going through trouble or struggles is hard. And I know that many that are going to listen to this are going to say, Well, you're, it's easy for you to say because you're not going through what I am. It's easy for you to say, but you don't have to do this every day. I want you to know that the situation does not change the words in the, in the Bible. And the Bible says that God is working together. It says, and we know. He doesn't say that we think or that we might. He says we know. This is a surety. This is why it, it should give us a greater hope. He says, for we know that all things are working together for good. But as I close, I want to put this out there. Because I, I want you to realize that, that it, it, is, it does have a, a hinge, if you would, or a catch to it. It's... There's a, there, there is a place, even as we as believers, where we can never, ever experience or understand the goodness. Where does that lie? In the very next statement. To them that love God. You say, Brother David, doesn't every believer love God? Can I tell you this right here? That, that when suffering gets to an extreme, things can come to a place where that person can be angry and frustrated and, 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 and have a Part of rejection towards God. But if we. Will allow the, our love for God. To allow God. To have his work. Then we can see. Not only in the end. That it was good. But in the now. That it's good. See the scripture is not going to be going to be overthrown by a believer who's angry with God. No, because of the fact that he's still going to get the end results of goodness because he's going to be made and transformed into the likeness of Christ. That, that, is, the, that, is, the, that is the working of God through our life that we become more like Christ and ultimately we'll be like him. When we see him face to face. But we miss the benefit of the now. When we refuse to allow our love for God. To reveal the suffering of today. In our lives. To see the goodness of God in the now. We miss the blessing of right now. Well, 
I want you to know that I understand. I really do. That everything doesn't look good. And not everything that comes in our life is good. But I want you to realize that everything God is working and weaving for our good. He didn't make the bad come into your life. I never sit there and say that God ordained bad things to come in your life. Never. But there's bad things that come into our lives. And when that happens, I didn't throw God a curveball and say, hey, now what you going to do, God? No, he's already started weaving those things in your life to produce it in your future that there'll be good that comes from it somewhere down the road. Let's stand together. Father, I thank you for your good grace and mercy. And Lord, I pray, God, that you would help us. Lord, I pray that you would reveal yourself in our lives, Lord. I know that, um, that we are living in a time that's, that's tough. Just with the outward things that are going on in our communities and in our lives, not even considering the things that are health-wise that are, that are playing a toll on many lives. But Lord, I pray that you would help us to be drawn closer to you, to have a deeper prayer life, to self-examine ourselves, to see if there's things that you're trying to burn off from our lives, that we would that we would not reject your chastening, because you said that it would be joy for us in the end. And Lord, I pray that you'd have your will in our lives. I do love you and thank you. And ask that you would just take what little was done. And glorify thyself. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.